Hi, I'm Tim Benland. I'm going to be appearing on the online prosperity show. I'm a project manager and marketing consultant. We're going to be talking about small business and how to deal with your mental health. Uh, there's a lot of nuggets in this conversation and hopefully we can help you out along the way to live a healthier and better life for you and your business. Me and Prosper had a great chat, so I hope you enjoy it. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, I've brought you the marketing consultant and sales professional, Tim. Tim, how are you doing, my man? Man, I'm, I'm very good. Thanks for, thanks for having me. Yourself? Hey. Fantastic. Now, viewers, if you're watching this right now, you would be aware that we're always on the lookout for people that are out there trying to create a life of their own or to have a happier existence. But if you're going to be running a small business, um, you know, on your own, it can be hugely rewarding. But for many business owners, having the sole responsibility for the company's success and the failure can actually take its own toll. Now, while you, it can be tempting for you to focus on all your time and attention on, on just your business, it is actually essential that you take good care of yourself, your mental health, and those people that are going to be around you. Now, you know, as a, as a, as a small business owner or a sole pr uh, trader, you might have a lot of, um, you know, challenges that you're going through and not have a lot of people to talk to. And that's the reason why I brought in, um, you know, Tim here. Tim, obviously, is a young man doing things for himself, but also goes through bouts of bipolar and sometimes uh, depression. But he's managing to get in and out of these and still, um, you know, um, have a happier existence. And I really had to find out what it is that actually makes him tick and how he can also help you be, do, and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Now, Tim, I could go on and on about your accolades, about how you um, were the best salesman at your previous job and your uh, marketing trips that you've been doing. You've been to Google in, was it in Dubai or whatever? Tell us a little bit about your story and yeah. how you got to be Mr. Beanland. Yeah, thanks, man. I, I, first of all, I wouldn't say best salesman. There were, there were definitely people that were better than me. Uh, much older than me as well at experience. I learned a lot from, from that sales environment. Um, I guess a bit about me. I started from an early age understanding what makes people tick um, by doing telemarketing when I was 18, um, jumping on cold calls and understanding that there's a one to three second barrier to get someone's attention. Um, and that sort of led me to really be obsessed with how you grab, maintain, and get people into what you're talking about, no matter what, if you're selling cars, if you're doing charity, if you're doing whatever. Um, so that started the passion. I guess from there, I then leaped into a marketing degree at, at 18. Um, so you then learn the differences between hardcore selling and, and marketing, where, you know, marketing takes you on a long customer journey, whereas sales is... Here's my phone, buy it. Um, and that was the real sort of turning point there where I could see the interplay but the differences. Um, and from there, I, I went into a role at a company called Bartercard, um, being a senior sourcing manager there. Um, and that was, that was interesting. I learned a lot. I had an amazing boss um, with that who taught me, you know, a lot to do with life, sales and and. You know, you talk about having people around you. Um, he's definitely one that I that I keep in, in my mind when he's teaching me stuff. So that's that's that thing um, to do with now. So now I'm I'm doing a little bit of sort of freelance work on the side, but also the major project I'm working with is as a project manager for a company called Saucy. Um, we essentially help businesses um, source from China in a way that's non-invasive, non um, you know, quality control checks and that sort of thing. So I'm helping there, but it's also good to then have my own time to focus on my health too. Um, so we'll get into that, but that's a little bit of where I'm, where I'm at at the moment. Great stuff. So obviously, you know, with that track record that you've had working with these big companies, you've dealt with a lot of people. What is it that you've actually learned, um, when it comes to how you as a person should perform when you're dealing with other people? I guess understanding that everybody's different. 
um, and people will react differently to the same set of conversations. Um, you could talk to an absolutely extroverted person and, and make jokes that are out there and, and they'll get along, whereas you can talk to someone who's more quiet and reserved and if you say something, it'll get them on the other side. So I guess, sorry, understanding people in terms of their differences and there's no one blueprint that, that fits all. Absolutely. So that question is going to segue into what I really wanted us to talk about today. Yeah. Since people are so different and everybody reacts differently to different circumstances, how then can you handle when you have bipolar and you want yeah. to be working uh, with all these different people um, in, in, in business? Yeah, I think first of all, it's self regulation. So for me, understanding triggers and, and things. So a lot of misconception with, with bipolar, what, what I have is bipolar 2, the biological disorder that, that is. Simply all that means is I go through periods of high activity and, and, and mania and that sort of thing, all the way down into then susceptible to, to being depressed and, and sad. So when I'm dealing with people in that context, if I'm up at a high level, I need to understand that okay, my opinion isn't the only one. Um, my opinion, you know, other people have different ideas and the collaboration of ideas is what makes an awesome um, product or service at the end of the day. It's not just one person, even though, you know, some people would like to believe that or think that. Um, I think that's, that's the case when it gets up here. Um, look, the depression I struggle with more, more so in terms of, I lose a lot of my ability and talk and communication and we've known each other now for almost a year, year and a half. And um, that ability to, to lose talk, especially in a marketing and sales environment is hard. So the thing I've learned from even just this last year is to maintain perspective, purpose and, and health, um, both physically and, and mentally. But, yeah. Absolutely, because from what you're saying, maintaining perspective uh, and health, because you can't do well if you don't feel well. So how do you then um, self-regulate, like you said, because considering you're working in high-pressure system sales and marketing, and there's other people that constantly tell you no, how do you sort of <laughs> let, let that not get to you? Or is that a contributing factor to maybe the other bouts of, uh, depression that you might go through yeah well the the nose is a fun one um when you're starting sales at 18 and and you know your third or second call is someone telling you to you know get stuffed you know i'll be politically correct but i think everyone knows what happens there um is it's just building a thick skin so over time that would be one of the things um you know confidence is gained by doing so doing things that will constantly push those boundaries will will help you self-regulate. Um, but I also think having a strong base and foundation is incredibly important. So for me, it's friends, family, um, relationships, um, exercising, and, and that base, that core sort of, and then activities that you can have outside of that. So look, I love marketing. I live and breathe it. I'm a, I'm a marketing nerd. But um you know, you need things like guitar or sport or cricket or, you know, those type of things that, that can help you get away from these stressful environments. Yeah. Absolutely. And how have you managed to re re recover from the, the last maybe bout yep. that you might have had? Yep. Um, well, as well as sort of, I want to put an importance on the right medication. So there's, there's stigma around taking medication for, for mental health. There's, I've, I've talked to certain people where they've gone, oh, you know, I've, um, I've got an antidepressant here that my doctor's given me, but I don't want to take it. And I go, well, if you have a cold, you, you take medicine. If you, if you break your arm, you put it in a sling. Um, you know, mental health is, it's not this out there thing. Biologically, there's things going on in your brain. So you need a, a medication. And, that was one of the things so i had to flick around and and change that um which amazing results um but then also going back to basics so 
I filmed myself, and you'll laugh at this, I filmed myself for eight days where I went for a walk. I might even be able to send you the picture. Um, first day, I've got this massive beard, um, put hoodie on, I just, I, I can't talk, and but I'm out there, I'm walking. And then day two, I do the same thing, three, four, five, six, seven. And then by day eight, I've, I've shaved, I've got a haircut, I, I'm, I'm looking better, I'm looking healthier. So people sometimes undervalue walking and something simple and just the first step. You know, taking that first step is hard, is, is you know, getting out of yeah, I, I appreciate that. But once you do it consistently, it, the turnaround for me, and yeah, it was fantastic. So that's the thing I would, I would suggest, yeah. Great stuff. I mean, obviously, thank you so much for sharing your story about Away Tim. Yeah. Um, you know, as an entrepreneur, there's, there's an environment that you put yourself into, an environment mm -hmm. of uh, no failure, okay? An environment yeah. of everything has to be done by me. Everything has to be in a certain way. Ducks have to be in a row and et cetera, et cetera. Does any of that contribute to the imbalance of what you're saying, you know, you know, the chemical imbalance in the head and maybe if it does, how can people actually, um, save themselves from putting themselves in a, in a corner that they can't get themselves out of? Yeah. I, I think the withdrawal from society and friends of, of, you know, I have to do this all myself and almost having an ego and going, I'm the only person that can do this and then not outsourcing or, or getting a team behind you and talent um, would be, it would be a massive problem. Like that's, that's one thing with, with your mental health is if you withdraw and stay away from people, it's going to get worse. Well, at least for me. And um, so I think how you can combat that, which is the second part of that question is getting a tribe of people around you. So go on, sites like meetup.com and and go to events like business events even if it's found like for me i've got a marketing degree but i'm looking at going to an event next week where it says foundational marketing why do i want to go to that it's because i know there'll be people there that understand me and that that tribe sort of mentality that we as humans are, are sort of built around connecting i know that there'll be people there that i want to want to talk to um, and I think that gets you out of your, you know, shell and out of your, um, sort of, I'm just going to do this work and I'm, I'm in the passion, but definitely if you are just too one mind track, it can, it could be dangerous potentially. I'm, I'm sure. And, and like, have you had experience with that? Like, you know, when you were first starting, there has to be a certain level of, I'm just going to focus on myself, but I'm sure you've, you've dealt with it. Absolutely. There's a myriad of videos on the internet of me crying, sitting here in my office and not knowing what the next step would be. So yeah, I do understand you there. Yeah. Yeah. Only thing is I can, I can believe that. Yeah. So <laughs> it's very cool. Great stuff. No, obviously team, um, some people might be like, you, you, you keep mentioning ego and how, people really need to connect with other people. Is there certain things that somebody might just check themselves and say, Oh, wait a minute. I think I'm going on to the other side. Now I've been doing this, 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 this has been happening. Is there like a early warning signs that maybe come to you that you start noticing? Okay, this is not real. Uh, I might just need to step back because some people, if they don't know that part, then they're not going to know it's actually happening when it's happening to them. Yeah, so I think, are you talking about triggers? Like what, what sort of triggers? Things? Something of that nature, if there is, if there is triggers yeah. or any early warning sort of signs. Yeah, and, and everyone has different ones. Um, you know, things that would cause someone's anxiety wouldn't cause someone else, someone else to be anxious at all. So people do have triggers for myself. Um, you know, I notice with depression, it's um, life events happen. Um, you know, and then, then I start withdrawing and stop doing the things I love. And those are all the, those are all the triggers there with the mania. Um, it's probably when really good things are happening, but in succession. So I'll have a really, really awesome day, but then I'll get home. And instead of self-regulating and going, Oh, let's play guitar for 20 minutes. I'll, 
I'll sit down at my, um, at my desk and write out a marketing plan in like 20 minutes, um, which sounds, sounds impressive, right? It sounds like that's amazing. Of course, I want that level of hyper productivity, but extended over a long period of time, it's, um, it's not good for your health. So yeah, the, the warning signs there both ways. So one awesome day and, and hyper productivity, but then I'm getting home and I'm not wanting to rest. And then on the depression, it's a life event for me that would happen. And um, uh, then I just withdraw and keep going down. Yeah, absolutely. Now, obviously, Tim, we could go on and on. And maybe whoever's watching the show right now is now thinking, okay, maybe I could be going through this or maybe I'm not. How am I going to know? Are you open to people getting in touch with you just in case, you know, somebody just wants to have somebody to talk to, like you said, you know, we're yeah. societal beings and we need people uh, to to be in touch with. If that's the case, how can people get a hold of you? Yeah, um, look, the best way to get a hold of me, oh, um, I mean, I've got a, a Facebook page, like a business page. It's just Tim, Tim Beanland, so my name. Um, also, Instagram, uh, beans.talking. Um, DM, send me a, a direct message on there. I'm, I'm checking that every day. So that's probably the best spot. Um, that's just, a, and, and that would be good, a good environment for you too, because I'm putting up quotes and, and inspiration and just testing out some marketing stuff there for myself. But um, things that I'm thinking about on a daily basis and I go, oh, that's really helped me. So probably the Instagram of, of beans.talking would, would be the best way. To, to get in touch and more than happy to but the the answer i'll probably give especially if somebody is going through something and and doing something like i'm i'm not a psychologist by any means so i would say go and get professional help but but more than happy to to talk to someone of course oh absolutely yeah. absolutely well i can't thank you enough my man for yeah your time uh, on the show. But before we go, is there any sort of last words that you want to give to anybody else who might be going through some major challenge in their life, but they probably not have owned up to it because I've read and I've seen some place where um, some person can go with depression for over three years before they're actually diagnosed and they actually don't understand what's going on um, wow. you know, with them. So it's, it's things like that that are happening and people don't quite know why they're acting a certain way and why they're reacting to life in a, in a certain way. Okay. So I would say take a step back for a second um, and, and really look yourself in the mirror and, and ask yourself some hard questions of what's going on. Um, something that will make you feel better is, is perspective. And you've sent me some really amazing photos um, through Messenger from your hometown, Zimbabwe. And I would say, look, there's 7.7 .7 billion people on this planet. Um, if you were to put everybody into a ball and then you can jug it up and, and then I ask you, okay, so you've got, you've got um, high functioning depression, um, but you've got a house and a car and everything. Um, put your hand into this bowl and you can pick out someone's, someone's life and you'll trade places with someone. So out of that. The question I then would ask you is, would you do that? Um, and everyone's going to have a different answer. So I know what mine is. Um, I, yeah. So I, I, I love, you know, myself and, and, and what, what I'm doing right now. So, but yeah, and, and I'm sure that, so that's, that's what I'd, I'd leave people on. Um, it's not to put anything negative towards what you're going through. Never do that at all because your situation is still, important but but that step back regulate perspective um is, is incredibly important absolutely yeah. absolutely and i love your perspective towards all of this anyway and uh i really appreciate your time on the show today and if you've been watching this it is really really important to actually take good care of yourself guys i mean you need to stay well and as a small business owner you have to stay on top of your business demands 
as much as possible and still have the energy to actually enjoy the life outside of work. You know what I mean? Because you can't do well if you're not going to feel well. All this work that you would have put in will all be in vain if you don't, if you go unchecked. So if you really want to live a life that's of a happier existence and if you want to live, learn and contribute, I suggest you subscribe to this show. And obviously you will be learning from people that are going through pretty much what you might or might not be going through, but you could learn a thing or two. Now, Tim, thank you so much for your time uh, on the show today. And uh, yeah, hope to see you in the limelight. Yeah, we'll, we'll catch up soon. It's, our relationship's interesting. We've never actually met in person, but that's, uh, that's the benefit of technology, eh? We've, we've got a good relationship over, over the interweb. So, um, but I'll drive out to Mernda sometime soon. Great stuff. Not a problem, team. Thank you so much. Yeah. Good.